Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Gaming Citycom video, we're going to be discussing Ryzen 7 1700X. The X is important, as you probably know by now, and we'll get into that in just a moment. But benchmarks have leaked onto the internet, and there are some caveats that we will be discussing with these benchmarks, not least of all, they are not, of course, 100% confirmed to be legitimate, but it looks like they have a good chance of being legitimate, if that makes sense. So, first of all, there was a lot of uh, controversy surrounding these benchmarks because the results aren't quite what you would expect, and there are some reasons behind that. But first of all, let's just take a stroll through benchmark memory lane. So, the performance of the uh, processor is measured by a couple of benchmarks, uh, primarily CPU mark, which has both multi-thread and single thread performance measurements. <clears throat> now, if you take a look at the results, for example, the first one, your CPU versus loaded baselines, you have 2046, whereas, let's say, the 6900K scores 2434. And I'm not going to read out all the results because you can certainly do, uh, you know, the visual um, uh, checks yourself. But, for example, under floating point math, 15... I'm slightly rounding it up or rounding it down here versus 18,000 for the 5960X, uh, the 17700K at 4.4 GHz, 9,500, which is roughly on par, of course, because of the scaling of um, scaling of uh, cores and threads, and it continues to go all the way down versus prime numbers, integer maths, and so on. We also have some other results. Now, these results come to us from a different source. SysSoft benchmark. Now these results are once again a 16 thread Ryzen CPU and it is ranked at 2513th position of SysSoft benchmark. It manages to achieve an excellent performance with a score of 435.12 mpix which is pretty impressive and obviously you've got various other ones that you can see on screen. I won't read out all of them. <coughs> Overall, the performance of this processor is really, really good and is roughly on par with a highly clocked 7700K or, let's say, a Xenon uh, E3, uh, sorry, E51650V4. Seriously, the name of some of these processors is not very easy to pronounce at all. Now, I mentioned there was controversy, and that is kind of a big deal. Um, and there are some other corrected graphs, and we'll go into more on those in just a second. But so what's the actual controversy? What's the issue with the uh, benchmarks that we're seeing? Well, it primarily comes down to two things. The first of which is it was tested on an A320 motherboard made by MSI. Now, this is very important because it's very probable Turbo was pretty much disabled because Turbo, from what we understand, is the B350 or the X370. And another issue, and this one, we don't know how much it affects it, because we don't know the effect of memory timings on Ryzen. We don't also know how Ryzen scales with uh, clock speed of memory as well. And that is, the memory timings were 17, 17, 17, 39, 2T. They're not awful, but they're not exactly what you'd be hoping for. You know, you'd be kind of hoping for uh, a little tighter memory timings, to say the least, because obviously some processors, and the reason I keep stressing some is because we don't know, once again, how timings scale with Ryzen. Some processors are very sensitive to memory timings, and some processors are more sensitive to pure clock speed than other processors. Well, it's a mixture of both, especially with certain benchmarks. Now, moving on from that, a chap on Reddit has made a graph which basically uh, corrects the issues. Now, I say corrects in such a tone because they're estimates. Essentially, what he's done is scale the performance of the results based upon clock speed. There are a couple of things he's done. He has basically done it with the presumption that you don't get 100% linear scaling on clocks. So, I believe he's done it at like 90% if memory serves. So, what that means is that, you know, if... I'm obviously just using an example here. If you score like 100 in a benchmark at like 2 gigahertz, and then you go to like 2.2 gigahertz, it's not like he's going to scale it to like, you know, another 10%. He's basically, um, I believe, at 90% scaling, which is pretty, pretty good. 
Uh, and you can see that once you start scaling Ryzen to the clock speeds that we're more hearing the CPU actually running at, like, you know, the 4 gigahertz-ish mark, then performance becomes a lot more impressive. Of course, that is, once again, assuming that clocks do scale linearly, or at least close to linearly. 90% is pretty close to linear, let's just be honest. AMD have told us in the past, I believe it was Lisa Su, who said that Ryzen scales really well with clock speed. So really well is like 85 to 90%, at least in my mind. But, well, you know, that's down to your interpretation and whether you believe that these results are accurate or not. Either way, with these type of performance, once again, I just want to hasten to add that this is the 1700X, which means that the chip is pretty cheap. And even if you say that this processor is scoring roughly on par of the 6900K. Let's even say that it's, you know, a little bit faster, a little bit slower based upon, you know, different applications that are running. The 6900K is not a cheap processor. It's considerably more expensive, like two, three times more expensive. And so that right there is a good indicator that Ryzen has a good potential. The other issue I have with these benchmarks is really they are only a few benchmarks. In other words, if this was a wide suite of applications, let's say for the sake of argument, it was Ashes of the Singularity at like 1080p, focused on CPU, it was like a whole bunch of video encoding, it was like, you know, the usual crap, I won't go through the list of benchmarks, you know what they are as well as I do, then obviously you could start saying, well, okay, now we get a better understanding of how the CPU scales. However, we do have one final little bit of news concerning this particular topic, and that is da, 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 the cooler itself. So another website by the name of Hardware Battle has managed to get hold of a few images of the Rafe processors, base, uh, sorry, Rafe processors, rather Rafe coolers. And there are a couple of different designs of them, as well as Raja Kadori basically cuddling with a um, case complete with the Rafe cooler. It appears, and I emphasize the word appears, that there are LEDs inside it, which could potentially be pretty cool. It's pink in the particular color that he's showing off. But for all we know, it could, you know, be any color under the rainbow. It could be, you know, rainbow colored, which would be kind of nice if that's the case. But we'll have to just wait. So what do I personally think of Ryzen? Well, it's kind of a topic that's long and um, difficult to discuss. It's like, we just don't know enough yet about how the CPU functions in terms of overclocking, what the overclocking headroom is, what the legitimate pricing is. I mean, we've seen leaked pricing, but, you know, I'm still going to remain somewhat sceptical until, you know, the likes of Amazon and overclockers and God knows what else are actually stocking the damn thing so you can buy it. And the final point is, like, you know, we need to see it, see it running in a wider suite of applications at once. Those things are, you know, under the way. Then we can start really making some summarization of the Ryzen architecture. My personal opinion, based upon these results, based upon what we're hearing, based upon the price, the leaked price. In other words, if all of this stuff is genuine, which I'm assuming it possibly is, just given the sheer number of leaks at this point, it would be really weird if every single one of these retailers had, let's say, the 400 US dollar mark or 360 five pounds ish for the 1800x it would be kind of weird if all of them were that price and then it turned out to be like you know 700 us dollars if all of that is legitimate if all of that is accurate then in my opinion ryzen is going to be really tricky for intel to counter that's not to say they can't counter it because they could cut their prices they could be more aggressive um and of course, we all know about the 7740K, which is supposedly a direct response to the 1800X. But, you know, we're just going to have to wait and see. Regardless of all of that, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.